Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Poets and Quants' online MBA panel, The Online MBA Experience. Today, we're joined by admission experts from three elite programs, University of Massachusetts Eisenberg, Boston University Questrom, and Northeastern University Diamore McKim. I'm your host, Christy Blyzeffer of Poets and Quants, and please feel free to use the Q&A function to submit any questions you have for our panelists. I'll do my best to get to those at the end of the session. Well, let's begin by getting to know each of you. Um, if you would just take a second to introduce yourselves and uh, your title and your schools, please. And Albert, if we could start with you. Yeah, my name is Albert Asaf. I'm a professor at the Eisenberg School of Management. I'm also a graduate faculty, faculty director. Um, I am um, also very involved in both online and uh, full-time MBA on campus uh, because I teach in both programs. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Megan. Hi, everyone. I'm Megan Kenny. I am the Senior Director of Amba Experience and Student Success for the online MBA program at the Boston University Question School of Business. And um, Jessica, please. Yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Ward. I'm the Program and Relationship Manager for the online MBA program at Northeastern University, DeMore McKim School of Business. Great, thanks so much. Um, Albert, do you wanna start by kind of giving us a general introduction of your school, the mission values, reputation? Yeah, actually, thank you. Thank you for uh, the question. Uh, you know, our mission at Eisenberg strongly aligns with the mission of UMass being uh, a flagship, flagship campus and land grant institution. So we really focus on preparing uh, uh, student, uh, men and women of integrity to be great leaders in the industry. Uh, we focus on, we fully understand the interdisciplinary nature and complexity of the business world. And we are always improving and adjusting our courses and adapting to the current uh, needs and trends in the industry. You know, as you know, we're one of the oldest and pioneers in the online space, at least, and uh, also in the full-time MBA. So we have a very strong network of alums and corporate partners that we work with and great job placement, uh, 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 you know, uh, career training as well at UMass. We prepare students, um, uh, you know, provide all the job placement support services for them uh, to find the best job for them. And, and, and of course, uh, to train them to be the best leaders where they are. And as you know, our ranking reflect our reputation, we're, uh, according to Financial Times, actually, we're number five worldwide, uh, number two in the U.S., and many other uh, respectful ranking agencies like U.S. News also ranks us um, uh, 12 overall, nine among public schools. So we've been consistently ranked among the best in the world uh, in both online and, and full-time MBA. Very good. Thank you so much. Uh, Megan, how about you? Absolutely. So um, Boston University is one of the leading private research um, universities here in the United States. Um, and the Questrom School of Business, much like UMass, um, really operates underneath that model. Uh, the mission of the Questrom School of Business is to create value for the world. Um, and we do that through um, education at all of our levels. So undergraduate, graduate and doctorate. Um, certainly the online MBA program um, allows us to create value for the world with a really accessible program um, that allows us to broaden our student population and give access and opportunity to students from around the world who maybe wouldn't be able to come to our campus um, located in the heart of Boston otherwise. Um, but we're really proud of that. Um, the Question School of Business is highly ranked um, on both the undergraduate and the graduate side. Um, and we're really proud of everything that, that we're able to accomplish for our students. Thank you so much. And uh, Jessica. Yeah, so um, Northeastern University fits right along with the company that we're keeping today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are a research institution. We are known um, for being innovators. Um, so that's really what Northeastern is known for. It's in our mission. It's something that we're not afraid to do to take risks um, within our, not only our program, but within our university. Um, and uh, you'll see campuses of Northeastern across the United States. Um, and that allows us to have a really far reach with our learners. Um, so, you know, from East Coast to West Coast, we have campuses. And so that allows us to have a lot of connections. Um, but we are also global as well. So um, we also really care about uh, experiential learning. Um, that's something that is in our program, um, even in the online space, and something we're really proud of and excited to offer. Great, thank you so much. Looking forward to learning more from all of you. Uh, why don't we go to Megan now and you can tell us a little bit more about the online MBA at uh, Boston Questrom. 
uh, how long has it been around? How long does it generally take to complete? Sure. So the online MBA program at Questrom launched in August of 2020. Um, so about th a little over three years ago, we're getting ready to welcome our eighth um, incoming class of students this January. We have about 2,000 active students um, currently enrolled and over 1,000 alumni already at this point, which is um, outstanding for in enhancing that um, opportunity for our students. Um, the minimum time to complete our program is two years or six consecutive semesters. Students have up to six years to complete the program. Um, I would say we're starting to get data on average time to graduation. And my guess is it's going to be about two and a half to three years. So students tend to maybe take a little bit of time off at some point, um, taking advantage of the flexibility um, that we offer. But we are a module based program. So um, our course requirements are six modules. These modules, modules are um, an integrated curriculum, so multiple functional areas, um, multiple faculty team teaching within each module. Very good. Thank you, Jessica. How about at Northeastern? Yeah, so at Northeastern, the minimum time to complete the OMBA is 18 months. I would say average is two years. Um, our entire program is 50 total credits, um, and we have some core courses um, that we think all students should have just as a basic of an OMBA. And then um, we allow for elective credits in three focus areas, and that's finance, business analytics, and innovation and entrepreneurship. And um, then we also have something called Expo Electives and Societal Challenges courses. These are courses that dive into important matters that impact the way that businesses function. So um, focusing on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and sustainability efforts, as these are concepts that all people in the workforce need to be incorporating into their work at this point. Yeah. Um, we've been in the online space um, since 2005. Um, but just like I mentioned at the in my first little blip, we are innovators and we are not afraid to completely scrap our program and redo it to make sure that we are staying competitive. And so um, we did that into 2021, paused our program, um, completely relaunched it. And so we've been doing that for the last year. And we're really excited at the product that we have um, in terms of the opportunities we have to network with CEOs and actually have them review business plans um, that students put together um, and work with them on group projects and kind of work with our students as clients. Um, and so that's a little peek into what our program looks like. Yeah, thank you. Um, Albert, how about uh, telling us a little more about the, the Eisenberg Online MBA? In terms of the history, I'm very proud to say we are the winners. We started back in... <laughs> 2001, you know, uh, oh. very, we're one of the pioneers in the online space, you know, and uh, we have a very rich history in that space. Uh, and, uh, you know, um, um, I would say uh, in terms of the pacing, um, on average, students take around three to 3.2 years, uh, but ranging from one to four, actually, and depending on uh, the needs of every student. So it's very customizable uh, to the need of every student. Uh, but, you know, we've been around for a long time. As, as Jessica said, we're also always updating and innovating, innovating the program you know, based on the current needs and trend in the industry and what student really needs. And of course, uh, the companies and the workplace as well. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, Jessica, how about uh, telling, talking to us a little bit about the flexibility um, it offered in the pacing, class selection, uh, required courses versus electives, uh, um, acres, asynchronous and synchronous, that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. So our program can be fully asynchronous if that's the choice that you wish. Um, we do offer um, what we call a faculty connect, which is a one hour session with your faculty member teaching whatever coursework you're currently registered for and office hours with the faculty member um, if you should choose to participate in them. All um, Faculty Connect sessions are recorded so that our students can review them afterwards. Sometimes our students go to the live session and just want the content again to rewatch um, so that they can look at specific content if they're struggling with a specific um, concept or something. Um, in terms of flexibility, it's completely flexible to what that learner wants their journey to be. To be. Um, we have a dedicated success manager um, that works with our learners to determine what path is best for them. Um, she can guide them electronically. She meets with them in, um, online if they're more of somebody that likes to talk things out. Um, and so 
Um, that's something that we're really proud of, that we have that um, really close, tight-knit community um, within our program. Um, we also um, have the ability, if our, our learners need to take breaks, we can work with them um, in determining their schedule. Um, and, you know, just like any course, there are deadlines and things that you still have to meet. So it's not like you can just turn in things whenever there are still deadlines that you have to meet, but the content itself, you can consume at a rate that works for you. Very good. Thank you, Albert. How about at UMass? Yes. Yeah, so uh, the pacing is like basically, uh, I would say one, two are typical a semester, uh, but we are very flexible. We have the winter session, which can, you know, offer kind of a faster path to finish quicker. There's six week session. We also offer in summer six and 10 week session. And of course we have the fall, the typical fall and, and spring semesters. Uh, in terms of the uh, synchronous or asynchronous sessions, so um, uh, all our courses are fully online, but we do offer uh, all, I would say all our instructors offer live Zoom sessions, live lectures that are not compulsory to attend. So if students cannot attend, we record them and we send them to the students. Mm -hmm. And that really improved the whole engagement. Like I teach statistics and economics in the program. I do more than eight live Zoom sessions. And, they, you know, and uh, many students come, they don't have to come if they have work, but I also send the recording afterwards. And like Jessica said, we also have regular office hours, weekly office hours with the students. We also have the advantage, I would say, that we have also hybrid format at our satellite campuses. So students can take uh, this hybrid format where we offer five live lectures and the rest is online. Uh, so that's also a, an attractive uh, feature of our program, um, you know, and most of our actually courses do not require a uh, prerequisite. Uh, so they're, we're very flexible on that, you know, side as well. And, uh, you know, I, I would say as well that, um, um, you know, we're, uh, as Jessica said, we're also always adapting and, and changing. And uh, we're always willing to meet with students, even if outside this time, you know, I've done like, for example, and many of our faculty do one on one session with the students if they need more help and extra support. So we're trying as much as possible to give them that on campus experience, um, of course, by not also forcing them to come and uh, respecting the fact that it's an online program. Right, of course, of course. Uh, Megan, how about, how about at Boston University? Sure. So our pacing is flexible. We offer um, our courses year round. So fall, spring and summer semester. So again, that minimum of two years, but students can take breaks as they need to. And um, our success specialist team will work with students as they need to do that. Um, our course selection is really simplified. Um, we don't offer any electives. Our curriculum is six required modules. Each module is the equivalent of two um, graduate courses in our residential program. And again, those are team taught by anywhere between three and five faculty. Bet um, from between three and five disciplines. So um, our program is really designed for mid-level managers and sort of teaching business how they're experiencing it in um, their everyday um, in their everyday jobs. Um, we do have synchronous and asynchronous components. So um, like my colleagues, we offer weekly live sessions um, twice a day on, on a certain day of the week um, as a way for students to hear from faculty to interact with each other. Um, some of those are, are required. We certainly work with students who have things that come up. Um, all of them are recorded and posted and made available to students. Um, we operate on sort of a weekly cadence. So every week or two weeks, they'll get the new material um, and have the chance to work through that on their own at their own pace. Um, they also may have uh, meetings with their project teams um, at any given time as well. So they're coordinating that. Thank you. Um, Albert, talk a little bit about you can have any opportunities for concentrations or other or specializations um you know what is offered and and what are kind of the support the students receive in that process so uh we have several focus areas um with additional electives like in finance in marketing in sport management uh, in healthcare in business analytics in entrepreneurship in the healthcare administration, they can take elective within Eisenberg or within the MPH uh, on campus Master of Public Health. Um, um, so we have a, a connection with them. Uh, in terms of, um, you ask about, you know, how, um, we have like um, uh, uh, personal academic advisor and uh, for 
every student that create a roadmap for students on how they complete the program. They're always advising them one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we also have a dedicated career coach as well for students uh, to help them, um, uh, you know, uh, to select the focus area. And, uh, you know, focus areas are not required, but they seem to be attractive uh, for many students. So it's like a nice addition, um, I, I would say, to their MBA experience. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Megan, are there concentrations at uh, Boston University? So we don't have concentrations or focus areas. We have, again, those six integrated modules um, or programs really designed for mid-level managers who are, you know, maybe looking to just get a little bit of um, understanding about the different functional areas that they may need to interact with. Um, but again, those modules, we work really hard across disciplines um, at the Question School of Business to make sure that students get exposure to all the different functional areas that they'll need. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jessica, what about at Northeastern? Yeah, so at Northeastern, we have um, focus areas, not concentrations. Our focus areas are business analytics, finance, and innovation and entrepreneurship. Um, we are looking to add um, a healthcare option here within the next year. So I'm really excited about that opportunity coming down the pipeline. Um, we also offer um, dedicated uh, career advising as well um, for our students and have our success manager too that um, meets with students one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we use Slack. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but that's a communication tool that our students can reach out to us, um, which they tend to love because they get answers very quickly, um, yeah. which we all know about instant gratification and how nice that is. Um, and so uh, we utilize that for our program so that we can assist if there are like quick questions that people have. And then of course, um, we'll support them if they'd like a meeting or something of that sort. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Megan, do you, are there opportunities or initiatives um, that have, which online MBA students can like come together on campus? Sure. Yeah. So we have um, a couple of different ways that students can come to campus every semester, at least in the fall and spring, we do an open house. Um, so anybody who is local to the area or going to be in the area, um, we invite them into our building, into our space to meet each other, to meet the staff, to meet the faculty. Um, those are really popular. Um, we also work with students who want to set up sort of meetups in other parts. So not on campus, but they're still able to connect with each other where they are physically located. So we'll help students connect um, you know, wherever they are and so that they can get to know each other. Um, and then online students are invited to uh, attend commencement when they graduate. So we usually get um, actually an incredible turnout um, of our online MBA students to come to graduation every um, every May. So that's a really great opportunity for them to get together as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jessica, what about, uh, you know, on-campus opportunities at Northeastern? Yeah, we, we absolutely provide opportunities to connect on campus and then also just um, in the Boston area, we do that as well. So we do like socials out in um, restaurants in the community. And then we have an event called the Campus Connect, which is an opportunity in the fall for students to come to campus, um, get to meet faculty um, and the staff that they've been working with. Um, this past um, Campus Connect, we focused on um, doing professional development around artificial intelligence, which was um, really wonderful because we have many research faculty members doing um, innovative work um, in this space. And so we got to hear some really excellent um, uh, conversations about that particular movement that's happening in all of our lives right now. Um, we also have opportunities because we have so many campuses across the U.S. to be able to um, connect with folks in um, different parts of the U.S. So we're really excited about that. Um, and then we also provide opportunities to connect um, virtually as well, um, which I think is important because not all people have the accessibility to be able to travel um, to Boston. Um, and so we definitely make sure that we accommodate our students that would prefer an online option as well. Yeah. Um, and Albert, what about a uh, UMass? Uh, yeah, uh, like Jessica, uh, like Northeastern, as well as Jessica said, we do have a lot of virtual events as well, where we invite students to join us virtually, and as well as inviting them to campus for several activities. And as I mentioned before, because we have these satellite campuses that give us a lot of advantage to invite students to the Boston, to the Shrewsbury area as well to attend some of the satellite events. So we're always engaging and inviting them. And of course, the commencement as well, as Megan said, is very popular for us. They're also invited to come to campus. So we also see many of them um, on graduation as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jessica, what would you say are the key differentiators for your program? 
Yeah, I definitely think our societal challenges courses and what we call experiential courses are our key differentiators in terms of coursework. Um, our students in those courses work with a specific client. Um, like we had a, a client that sells granola that they were helping with a marketing plan um, to help them launch their business. And so they actually got to work with the client as if they were putting together their marketing plan and each group project got to um, have that experience of working back and forth with somebody on that. Um, and um, those courses also allow folks to have that key component of group work, which I know can be controversial, um, but all of us have to work in group work all day long in our jobs oftentimes. Um, and so it has been a really great experience for our students. And one of the things that they say that they love about our program is the community that we have, which you do not always hear about an online program. Mm -hmm. um, so we're super proud about that differentiator, um, that our students love to come together, collaborate, um, work on those projects, um, because it does really provide you an experience that you can't really get everywhere. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Albert, what about the differentiators for your school? Well, there's several of them. I can just maybe highlight four key areas. Um, I would say, you know, one of the key strengths we have is that the same core that's offering the full-time MBA is also offering the online MBA. So students, when they receive their degree, it doesn't really stay whether it's online or on campus. They receive a Master of Business Administration from the University of Massachusetts, the same degree that full-time MBA students receive. Uh, we have flexibility in pacing and course uh, selection. And um, I'm really very proud to say well, we have some of the best faculty teaching in that program. So faculty excellence is really an area that we care so much about. And um, and we also have the focus areas, which is a, a key advantage for us. We also have a dual degree option, MBA, MSBA business analytics that students can take as well. So this is really a key advantage for us and it's been very popular as well. Um, so, and of course our history, we have, uh, you know, great network with the industry, a great, um, you know, word of mouth out there uh, yeah. that really help us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and Megan, what about at Boston University? Yeah, I think there are a few things of uh, that we're really proud of here at Questrom in our the program. Um, first is our integrated curriculum. So again, that opportunity for our students to study business the way that they experience it every day. So not siloed, not by functional area, but sort of by topic. Um, so they're able to, you know, come in, uh, study their content for the week and apply it at their job, you know, the next day, the next week. Um, so we're really proud of that. Um, we place a really strong emphasis on teaming and collaboration, um, you know, sort of echoing what Jessica said. Our students are um, placed on a project team in each of their six required courses. So they're getting to work with six different teams, um, really, really developing, you know, not only their ability to tackle a problem together, um, but their their development of those soft skills of, right, how do you navigate working across a global team? How do you navigate um colleagues who are handling the life stuff that's coming into the classroom. So they really um, have an opportunity to build incredibly strong relationships with each other um, and navigate challenge together. Um, and I think the third thing that we're really proud of um, are our live sessions. Um, our students, um, you know, come to most of them, even though they're not all required um, and are really um, I think excited about not only the interaction that they get with our faculty, but the interaction that they're able to have with each other in those sessions. And again, really being able to build that sense of community and classroom um, in a virtual way, which is really cool. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, Albert, let's talk about uh, how emerging technologies such as AI and data analytics are you know, changing the future of work. And how has the University of Massachusetts you know, kind of responded to that? Well, I think you would be, um, you know, I think uh, not doing your work well if you don't respond to this current trends <laughs> in the industry. And we are really on, on top of this. We've been offering really, uh, uh, in, you know, we incorporating this um, into our curriculum. So we offer uh, a lot of, you know, several courses that give training on Tableau, on Python, on uh, analytics. So we're really preparing students for this emerging trends and we are continuously improving and looking at how we can add more to the curriculum to really equip students with the uh, you know uh, skills that they need and uh, we've organized several events on campus as well we we brought several um uh, industry speaker from 
you know, uh, talking about this specific area, AI and others, uh, just to all, always be engaged with them and to get more ideas about how much we can add or where we can add, you know, uh, more, um, uh, you know, of this uh, new trends to our program. So we really been on top of this. Uh, we have a very, uh, I would say, skilled leadership here uh, that we're always um, looking for all these new trends. And uh, our students, really, we have a, a variety of courses on, on analytics related courses. So uh, I would say we are in um, moving in the right direction when it comes to that. Very good. Uh, Megan, how about at Boston? Yeah, you know, I think similar to UMass, BU is is very aware that that these things are here to stay and that they're changing the things that our students need to learn in the way that they're going to work. So we opened a school of computing and data sciences. We have new programs that are rolling out. Um, we have a task force to sort of, you know, look at AI and how we're going to incorporate it into our curriculum. Questrom is doing th very similar things, you know, holding events, bringing in industry experts. You know, I think one of the, the challenges and things that we're thinking about now is how do we balance um, the recognition of AI and that people are, you know, students are going to be using it in their coursework. Folks are using it in their jobs when, when thinking about our students. Um, how do we balance that with the academic integrity of the institution? And how do we make sure that students are, um, that we're helping students understand how that how they can use these tools, how they can learn about them, how they can become proficient in them while maintaining the high academic standards and academic integrity level that we expect, um, you know, in terms of teaching them about them, but not encourage them to use them. Um, in, in place of their own work. I think that's going to be a real challenge for institutions as we sort of navigate this new world. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jessica. Yeah, I love this topic. I feel like I could talk for hours just about <laughs> AI and what our future is going to be and um, embracing the technologies coming down the pipeline. I think in terms of how is AI going to change business? I think it's going to empower workers that maybe didn't have knowledge or skills or expertise in certain areas and allow them to thrive in ways that they never knew were possible and is going to uh, streamline work, make it easier for folks to get things done. Um, so we are um, very enthusiastic about AI over here at Northeastern. We actually just appointed a new Dunton Foundry, um, family dean um, of the DeMar McKim School of Business. Um, uh, his name is David DeKramer, and he is an expert in this field. And so it's been so awesome having him as our leader um, for our business school. Um, and one of the things that um, Dean DeKramer really emphasizes is, yes, like AI is going to revolutionize um, the business world and we have to embrace it, absolutely. Um, one of the things we also know from this is the vitality, the importance of soft skills um, are going to be that much more important um, because you cannot get that from a computer and you cannot get ethics from a computer. And so that's where um, the human component becomes absolutely essential. Um, and so that's something we're really talking a lot about in our program is like, yes, we want to embrace these technologies. And we also need to be sure that we have students that have high EQ as well um, and know how to interact with folks and um, and have those skills to be able to be successful so that they can thrive in their careers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you know, just kind of playing off this question a little bit, Jessica, but, you know, we're talking about the future of work and how, you know, it's changing so rapidly that we may not even be able to picture the future of work right now. So what are some of those soft skills that you were talking about that come from your program that, you know, that are kind of most important for an MBA student? Yeah, I think the ability to work through difficult situations where you have non-responsive uh, group members that maybe mm -hmm. aren't pulling the work that you want them to pull. Um, you also need the ability to have disagreements and to professionally um, have a stance that is different from somebody else and be able to work through those common grounds, um, which is something um, that I think our societal challenges courses do, do very well is um, so we understand like this social landscape of where things are and how we need to pay attention to things that have been ignored for years. Um, and so that's something that we've integrated into our curriculum, but then are also like have specific courses on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Albert, do you have any thoughts on what, you know, your 
online MBA, you know, provides to to students in kind of an uncertain future of work kind of environment? I think, you know, with AI and Jessica mentioned that, I think a, a very important area is business ethics, right? And how to really <laughs> use this in an ethical fashion, right? And uh, so we really placed uh, a lot of focus on, you know, business ethics on we're also uh, 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 adding a course uh, soon on diversity, equity, and inclusion. We have it in, in, in there now, but we're going to uh, have it more formally as well there. And of course, you know, the soft skills on human resource, on team play and teamwork, and, uh, and you know, and all of this will remain important, uh, as Jessica said, that, uh, you know, the, the ethical component, I see it very important going forward, right? Um, uh, and being responsible as well. So uh, I, I think this is what we, you know, hopefully uh, will place more focus on down the road as well. Yeah. And uh, what about uh, uh, Boston, Megan? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with everything that, that my colleagues have said here. I certainly think, you know, uh, the ability for our students to work across, you know, diverse teams and, and, and everything that that encompasses, not only working with folks who are in different parts of the world, but um, we talk a lot about cultural humility and learning to work with folks who have different backgrounds and values um, than you and, and how do you navigate those, um, you know, ethical business, uh, business ethics, all of that is really important to us. And I think, you know, when we think about educating managers, it is that really high, you know, um, emotional IQ. It really is those soft skills. It's how do we develop empathy? It's really easy to be mad at a person on your team for not pulling their weight. Um, when we have those coaching conversations, it's it's harder to step back and say, if I was this person's manager, how do I have sort of that human centered conversation of like, what's going on with you? This isn't like you, how can I help support you and trying to really develop those types of things um, when we are training uh, uh, students, you know, to be to be people managers. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, I'm going to give each of you kind of a last uh, last word, um, uh, kind of last closing argument for your programs. And if you, you know, just be sure to tell people what's the best way to kind of connect if they want to learn more. And um, Megan, let's just uh, end with you there. Sure, absolutely. So, um, you know, we are, we're incredibly proud of the program that we've built here at the Questrom School of Business. Um, we're proud of the community that we are able to develop with our current students, with our alumni, you know, across the Questrom as a whole. Um, we pride ourselves on our integrated curriculum, our opportunity for students to work across diverse teams in a global environment. Um, so if you are interested in learning more, you can visit our website, um, bu.edu slash AMBA, or you can reach out to our admissions team um, at mba at bu.edu. Very good. Thank you. And Jessica. Yeah, I think when it comes to an online MBA experience, um, we really offer something that is personalized, that is customizable, that allows you to um, have flexibility uh, with your life. Um, we have lots of folks that travel quite a bit um, for work and they're able to manage their schedules based off of the flexibility on the program. I really see our program um, being one that can support learners um, in networking as well with our, our large network of Northeastern University students, both undergrads and grads, um, as well as our you know, wonderful research faculty from the DeMorgan School of Business. Um, and so um, you can connect with us um, online. You can find us at um, onlinemba.northeastern.edu, or you can also e email us at onlinemba at northeastern.edu. Um, and we're excited to interact with you. Thank you. And uh, Albert? Oh, well, I would say come and join us because we've been doing this for a very long time. We kind of developed strong experience in the online space. Uh, we have, uh, as I said, great flexibility. Uh, we have excellent uh, faculty teaching in the program. We have excellent record on job placement. Uh, we have excellent network of alums and corporate partners. Um, and we have excellent course selection, very innovative curriculum, um, and um, um, uh, always willing to listen, always willing to improve, uh, always willing to work with you. And uh, if you want to learn more about our program, of course, you can visit the Eisenberg School of Management website, where you can also find the links of where to apply and get more information about the program, or also get in touch with some of our amazing advisors on campus as well. So uh, yes, um, uh, uh, we've been doing it for a long time. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, thanks each of you for all your time and uh, your expertise um, and, uh, you know, just a great wealth of information. Um, and also, of course, thanks to all our um, listeners out there. Um, remember, if you are um, looking for online MBA programs, we have a lot of interviews just like this with other great schools from around the country and even um, across the world. Um, you can check those out at our Poets and Quants YouTube page. And until we speak again, have a great rest of your day.